Yo guys, what's up? It's Corey Talaska. We're back here for another video. Uh, basically, to catch up to where we are from last video, we have the 2J sitting in mocked up so we can run fuel line, uh, coolant lines, test fit exhaust, uh, exhaust manifold, intake manifold, which we found out we need to get rid of the brake booster. We're going to go probably to a Willwood um, separate master cylinder setup. Um, and then also we cut out a bunch of the rear floor and rear package tray. And then the last thing I said I was going to do is I'm actually going to cut more of the package tray out. And then we're going to build like a false firewall that goes all the way across. So um, I have uh, I have polycarb at work, eighth inch polycarb that we can use for the window. So I'll make sure I get some of that um, tomorrow. And then my pops is, uh, is going, running into town right now to get some some angle iron and everything so we can actually hopefully mount up the radiator and uh, we'll have a better idea of actually what we're building the shroud around. So I'm going to clean up a little bit because I still got all the metal pieces that I cut out on the ground and then uh, and then we'll dive right into continuing on this. Alright, so I made the cut I was talking about across the package tray. Everything's more open. I uh, cleaned up my mess, vacuumed everything up. So this is a good starting point to actually make the mounts for the radiator and everything. Um, I'm going to take a little haul from this though. We got the we got the 2J out and then back in with the Collins adapter and the, the BMW 5-speed trans. Everything fits pretty nice. Uh, we'll probably have to potentially make a new selector rod <clears throat> down underneath the tunnel right here because it is a little bit long. The, the whole thing's like three quarter of an inch uh, back further than it was before. So now to solve our brake issue we're um, gonna pull all this stuff off and then look at how we're gonna do our mounting for the new pedals and everything. See how much room we have and then once we get this off, we'll actually be able to test fit the intake. So we got the booster out, the manifold or the cylinder is still sitting here just so we can leave all the brake lines hooked up, but the engine's in, trans is in, Collins adapter, the new excessive motor mounts with the Condor bushings, everything fits really nice, it went in nice. The manifold's on, The uh, both manifolds are on, this thing fits nice, there's clearance everywhere, and it's a nice piece. And then uh, our, we, I took all the lines off of our turbo and slapped it on here, and then reclocked this. Um, we didn't have one of these fittings on here now, we might run this at some point, but. A, at some point we do want to weld a 90 on here so it's not that. And then we do also have our adapter. Like I said, the manifold's T4, the turbo's T3. So that's on there as well, but everything looks like it fits up nice. And then this throttle cable is off of a 318. Um, this is the, the stock E36 throttle cable. Not even close to reaching where it needs, which is these two holes right here. But um, this piece right here, where it goes in, which is backwards. I got this all jacked up. Literally matches perfect to where it needs to mount. So if you're using, uh, and I think this works with stock as well. So if you're using a 2J Henry 36, a 318 throttle cable works perfectly fine. So what we did is we took some one by one eighth inch wall angle, some steel angle on both sides. Uh, I took a bunch, bunch of measurements, made some lines in the roll bar so I knew what my width between my radiator was. And then uh, the bottom is tacked in right now, but then up here, I basically drilled holes, nut inserted, and then screwed it into the package tray. And then once we screwed that in, then we made sure all of our measurements were straight. This thing was level across and then tacked it in. And now the radiator is just mocked up, like clamped in. So this is going to be the positioning. We're probably going to slide it up a little bit more so maybe the water pump can go down here and then we have enough room for our dash 16 fitting and line down there so and since even though this does have a top fill since we're angling it so much we're going to be running an external uh swirl pot expansion tank whatever you want to call it so now that we know everything works we're going to fully weld in the angle and then the mounts will be all good all right all right so now Everything's welded in, like I said. Holes are drilled for the radiator. So right now the radiator is mounted in its permanent location. Now when I do do, when I, this is like technically still mock-up, I'm gonna put like little grommets or rubber washers in between the angle and the radiator, just to, so it's not solid on solid. And then, but now we have everything to, you know, be able to run our lines. We have both the AN fittings here. Uh, everything back here is looking pretty sick. Now I just need to get a bunch of 063 aluminum so I can build, you know, the whole rear shroud and firewall and stuff. 
So that'll probably happen throughout this week, hopefully, efficiently. And uh, But I'm really super happy how this came out. And then just to recap, I'm, f I'm feeling pretty good about how everything's fitting. You know, the, there's no clearance issues down there, like where the tunnel, where the trans, where the Collins adapter is and everything. Uh, I got my, my waste skate on, which is in a really nice spot. With this engine versus the S52, which literally sits like this, there's just so much room. I mean, you can easily get to everything on the turbo, all the fittings, all the bolts for the flange, the wastegate, um, you know, what, what we're gonna have down here are lines that come from the turbo, the whole intake. I mean, everything is super, super easy to get to. Our, our oil filter is gonna be right here. You know, the, on the S52, you have zero access to the starter. You could definitely work on it, work on something if you needed to. I took off the, uh, the brackets that were here for the front mount radiator, the stock OEM positioning. So everything that we're doing just makes the whole setup simpler, uh, better, easy to work on in the future. And then um, I'm definitely pretty psyched to get the Willwood pedal set up for down here. So we're basically just gonna pull out this clutch and brake pedal assembly completely. We'll have to make a plate, you know, and mount those. One, one of the reservoirs will probably be able to stay down here. The other one I'll probably have to remote um, locate just because the steering shaft is in the way, but it'll be way nicer and completely clear off. There will be nothing left here in the firewall, except for, you know, I just have my oil overflow. That's literally it. So things are just leaving the engine bay completely, especially coolant overflow that I have over here is completely gone. Everything's gone. That's in the back. So it's all cleaning up. So now we are at the point where the radiator is mounted, the mock engine's in. Thank you, Keith, for letting us use this again while our mine's getting built. Now I can run fuel lines. I can run coolant lines. I can literally run everything that I need for when my engine comes in. Now I can, you know, get my exhaust uh, piping, get make my downpipe. Uh, as soon as my intercooler comes in from Mishimoto, which hopefully it'll be like this week, I can put the front end on, mount that up, make charge piping. Now it's basically, instead of waiting on parts, I'm really just like, it's just work that we gotta get done if we wanna get the car done in the time frame that we want to. But I'm pretty hyped. Mounting this was a really huge deal. I think it was a, it was a huge step forward. We needed to make that happen. But that's pretty much all I'm gonna do today. So uh, I'm gonna go edit this, hopefully get it up here to today. Um, and then, so thank you. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.